I'd like to begin by making a distinction between the terms sample and population. A population is really a, a complete set of anything. It uh, represents every observation of some particular category that we're looking to study. A sample, on the other hand, is a subset of this population. And we can often use that sample to estimate details of the population. Now, it's probably also worth noting that when we talk about the quantitative details of a sample or of a population, the word statistic is often used for sample figures whereas the word parameter is used for populations. So in this video, we're going to cover some of the ways that we can generate samples from known distributions in Maple. And to start, I'll just do a couple of quick examples here from our student statistics package. So let me start by generating a new random variable. We'll just call this one x, and we'll generate it from a binomial distribution. So x here colon equals binomial, binomial random variable. And binomial random variables have parameters n and p, where n is the number of trials and p is the probability. So let's go for a thousand and probability of one half. We'll hit return, and this returns our random variable here. Now to sample, one of the easiest ways we can do that is just by right-clicking on this random variable that we generated. Let's go down to student statistics and just choose get sample. And now let's return a sample of size 100. And there's our sample. If we double click on the sample, we can go in and view values taken from this distribution. And of course, if we right click on this, you can do things like generate plots based on that. All right, so let's, let's move on. Let's do another example. I'll, I'll generate another uh, sample from a uniform distribution this time, so uniform random variable. And in this case, the arguments are lower bound and upper bound. Let's just do 1 and 10 as our lower bound and upper bound. And there's our random variable there. We'll just right click on that. Again, go down to student statistics, get sample, sample size of, we'll just do 10 this time just so I can show all the values to the screen, and hit return. There's our sample for the uniform distribution. As we saw before, it was easy to plot the results here. We can also do things like find the mean of the sample. We'll just choose student statistics, quantities, mean, and choose value. And here, the value for the mean for this uniform distribution sample is around 6.3. So, so moving on, I want to talk a little bit more about uh, the, the idea of really how good an estimator are sample statistics with respect to the parameters of the population. So to do so, I'll start by declaring another new random variable. And let's take this one from a normal distribution this time. So normal random variable. And uh, the calling sequence for the normal random variable is going to be mu, then sigma, the mean, then the standard deviation. In this case, we'll just use 1 and 0. So 1 is our standard deviation, and 0 is our mean. And accordingly, if we right click on the random variable and we just try to find the mean of this distribution, we're going to find that, sure, the mean here is zero. And I'm guessing the same thing here is going to be true for the standard deviation. So these are really the, the, the population or the, uh, the mean of that normal distribution itself but we're going to probably end up with a slightly different term when we start sampling from this normal distribution. So what, what the question I'm really aiming to answer, or that I, I want us to, a little, to look a little bit deeper into, is, is really um, as we start to take samples, does in fact taking a larger and larger sample get us closer and closer to population characteristics uh, for things like the mean and the standard deviation? So let's start. Let's generate a sample. And we'll take a sample of size 100. And then let's find the mean of this sample. So the mean, in this case, the mean of the sample taken from the normal distribution is actually equal to 0 0.2. So we can see already that we're a little bit off of the, the, the value we saw, we saw before, the 0. So let's, let's try this again. We'll try to generate another new sample. 
So we'll choose student statistics and get sample. And let's go to 1,000. And we'll try this again. And now we can see it's 0 0.03, so we're stepping t towards zero, closer and closer. So, so now what I really want to do is I want to turn some of this computation over to Maple. So let, let's go down here. Let's call Z again. That way I've got my random variable to work with down. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a little bit of code. So let's just do a little simple for loop. So for, for I from 1 to, we'll say, 8, do. And what I want to generate is the mean. So here's the command for finding the mean of a sample. Then I'm going to use the sample command in order to generate a sample based on our data. So, and before we called this z, so we'll again use z, and we'll do the size of our sample is going to be 10 to the power of i, and do. And what this is essentially going to generate is uh, consecutive means. We're going to start at a sample of size 10, then a sample of size 100, and so on. And we're going to see as we get a higher and higher uh, sample num quantity if we get closer and closer to that true value of zero. All right, so we can see now that uh, basically as we step up here, so here's the sample of size 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, and so on. We can see basically with each consecutive mean that we're getting closer and closer and closer to a value of zero for our mean. If we uh, look at this another way and we start talking about, in fact, taking a collection of samples rather than just having created one large sample here like I have of size 10 to the power of 8, if we instead say that we're going to do a number of different samples um, and we'll then start to approximate the population mean by looking at the mean of the collection of sample means, we can bring in the idea of the standard error. And uh, the standard error of the sample mean is really the distance that a sample mean is from the population mean. So this is kind of the, the variance or the, the standard deviation itself for the mean of the sample means. And it's, this is given by a formula. We'll just write this in here. So it's sigma. And in this case, we'll call it sigma z, just because we're using z for our random variable, is equal to sigma over square root of n. So with this formulation, you can actually see very quickly that as we increase the number of observations in our sample, we'll find that the mean of the sample gets closer and closer to the mean of the population because this term here, so the sigma z, is actually going to go to zero as n approaches infinity. So I'll just do some, I'll borrow some of our terms from one of our palettes. So I'll open up the calculus palette over here. Let's just grab a limit, and I'll show you this. So as n goes to infinity, this term here, just to verify this, does in fact go, yes, towards zero. So what that means in essence is, is, is that if we take an increasingly, uh, increasingly large number of samples and then get the sample mean of those samples, that in fact we're going to move towards uh, the population mean. So, and, and this of course leads into another key concept, namely the central limit theorem, which we'll cover in another webinar.